SARS-CoV-2 is the virus that causes the coronavirus disease 2019, commonly referred to as COVID-19. The virus can enter the body through a number of different tissues and organs. In this complete anatomy video, we will walk through the respiratory infection route. SARS-CoV-2 can enter the nose or mouth through inhalation of virus containing water droplets. These tiny water droplets can settle on the wet mucosa of the nasal and oral cavities. SARS-CoV-2 enters cells through the angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE2 receptor. Mucosal cells in the nasal cavity can express this receptor and the infection can start here. The oral cavity does not have as friendly of an environment as the nasal cavity. In addition, no cells in the oral cavity, to our knowledge, express the ACE2 receptor, so infection here is not as likely. Therefore, we will focus first on the nasal cavity with regard to the infection route. Note here the nary, the medial wall of the nasal cavity, and the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. The nasal cavity is a two-chambered structure, similar to two rooms of a house, divided by a shared medial wall, the nasal septum. Note here the medial wall of the nasal cavity. Each cavity has a nary at its front entrance and a coana as its back exit. On the opposite lateral walls hang three shelves the turbinates, which are concha covered by mucosa. The ceiling is the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone, and the floor is the hard palate of the maxillary shell. Each surface of the nasal cavity is lined by a pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. The cilia sweep particulate matter trapped in the thick, watery mucosal secretions toward the nares. The oral cavity is a single chamber with the mouth at its front entrance, and the fossies, formed the, by the palatopharyngeal and palatoglossal arches, with the uvula in the middle as its back exit. The tongue lies at the floor, the hard palate at the roof, and the cheeks are the walls. Each surface of the oral cavity is lined by a stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium. That remains wet by virtue of the constant secretions of the mixed ceramucus submandibular and sublingual major salivary glands. The pharynx is a vertical tube that connects the nasal cavity and oral cavity posterior to the coenia and fossae, respectively. The nasopharyngeal epithelium changes from pseudostratified ciliated to stratified squamous non-keratinized in the oropharynx, shown here. The mucosal secretions, epithelium, and underlying innate immune response cells, primarily neutrophils and macrophages in both nasal and oral cavities, are the first line of defense against foreign invaders. In the event that the mucosal secretions are insufficient to trap, repel, or block pathogens, beds of immune cells are ready and awaiting in structures called tonsils. There are three principal tonsils in the nasal and oral passageways. The pharyngeal tonsil, shown here, is located at the roof of the nasopharynx. The lingual tonsils, shown here, are located on the posterior lateral surfaces of the tongue. The palatine tonsils, shown here, are located between the palatoglossal and palatopharyngeal arches of the fossies. Each tonsil contains cells for an adaptive immune response, macrophages, B lymphocytes, and T lymphocytes. Hopefully these immune responses are enough to fight off further infection. Water droplets or the cell-to-cell -cell infection can travel through the pharynx, then through the larynx, and into the trachea. Here we see the nasopharynx, the oropharynx, and the laryngopharynx, also known as the hypopharynx. 
SARS-CoV-2 enters the lower airway through the laryngeal inlet, shown here, bordered by the epiglottis, then through the rim of glottidis, which is bordered by the vocal folds. The trachea and primary, secondary, and tertiary bronchi of the lower airway transmit air, but the cilia on the pseudostratified epithelium are actively attempting to brush foreign material, including viruses, out of the lower airway and back into the laryngopharynx. Here we see the trachea, its cartilages, the right main stem bronchus, a middle lobar bronchus or secondary bronchus, and finally, the segmental bronchi or tertiary bronchi. Now we will move from the tertiary bronchi into the bronchioles. Air moving from the tertiary bronchi into the alveolar sacs passes through the bronchioles. Once air passes the terminal bronchioles into the alveolar sacs, the last line of cellular defense is comprised of dust cells. These are resident macrophages whose job is to phagocytose foreign invaders, then present parts of the invaders to T helper lymphocytes. The T helper cells then interact with the antigen presenting macrophages to elicit an immune response. Dust cells reside on the alveolar epithelium, which is comprised primarily of type 1 alveolar cells or type 1 pneumocytes. In addition, type 2 pneumocytes are present on the alveolar epithelium. These cells are known for the surfactant that they produce, which is a soapy film that reduces the surface tension on the epithelium. Type 2 pneumocytes highly express the ACE2 receptor, these are the primary cells through which SARS-CoV-2 infects the lungs. As you can see from this image, SARS-CoV-2 contacts the cell membrane of a type 2 pneumocyte, its target cell. Remember that we are only discussing the airway in this video. By docking with the ACE2 receptor in a complex mechanism, the virus is able to enter into the type 2 pneumocyte, replicate, and downregulate ACE2. And here, from replication, it infects the rest of the airway. During the making of this video, we encountered an excellent article written by Meredith Wadman, Jennifer Cousin Frankel, Jocelyn Kaiser, and Catherine Matasik on April 17, 2020. For a complete listing of the possible sites of SARS-CoV-2 infection, please refer to this Science Magazine article titled, How Does Coronavirus Kill? Clinicians Trace a Ferocious Rampage Through the Body from Brain to Toes.